Hey guys, this is Keith again. Uh, today uh, we're going to be doing part two, a uh, video review of the Mike Doyle 96 and one multi-pack kit. Uh, I'll put a link to uh, part one in the video description there. And basically in part one, all I demonstrated was how to install the kit on a Pac-Man or a Ms. Pac-Man PCB, installing it in the cabinet, and then uh, running through all the uh, setup menus uh, to show you how to set up your game. Now that we've done all that, we're going to go over some of the games, uh, mostly the unique games, but I'll show you a few of the maze variants as well. So again, when you start up your game, uh, this is the first screen you get. Um, and it will stay frozen on this screen until you hit start. Now once you hit start, as long as you're out of that first screen, you don't have to worry about it uh, being frozen on any screen. It'll eventually go to your default game. And then if you have a screen, your screensaver enabled, um, it will go to your screensaver. So you don't have to worry about burn-in as long as you hit start and get out of that uh, first splash screen there. So unless you have a simple menu activated, this is the first screen you get. Um, it it uh, gives you the uh, Ms. Pac and Ms. Pac uh, Plus options here, uh, Pac-Man options. Uh, so basically... Let's, let's start with uh, Ms. Pac-Attack. It basically looks like your standard Ms. Pac-Man. You have your free play, uh, a unique high score for this game. But the maze is different. You've got the, the uh, Ms. Pac-Attack maze. Um, I believe it's also known as the Tournament Edition. Or actually the Tournament Edition is, is a different uh, maze. So other than the maze difference, it's pretty much Ms. Pac-Man. We'll get out of that, hit the, the two start buttons and right to pause, and then we'll go um, up to return to the menu. Uh, Ms. Pac, no exit, is basically the standard Ms. Pac-Man maze, but without the tunnel on the side, so the difficulty is a little more difficult. Now, Miss Pac-Man Plus uh, is a pretty neat, uh, pretty neat thing. Uh, it's basically uh, Miss Pac-Man, but with the Pac-Man Plus um, rules and difficulty in place. And apparently, it has the same high score. The, all the Miss Packs on that first page have the same high score table. I just noticed that. So, like Pac-Man Plus, you see how the one ghost there did not change. They're also faster, and now that I hit the Coke can, I've got an invisible ghost that I can eat. Uh, the only difference I noticed really is that uh, the scoring is still the standard 2, 4, 200, 400, 800, and 1600, whereas the Pac-Man Plus when you eat the soda can, I believe it's uh, 400, 816, and 32. So if you like Miss Pac-Man, but you uh, kind of like the challenges and the extras that the uh, Pac-Man Plus game has, uh, this is a really neat option here. So we'll exit out of that. Now, uh, you get Pac-Man options and Pac Plus options, but it basically just takes you to other pages. I usually just hit the two-player start button to go to other pages. So now, as explained, uh, this is um, your Pac-Man page, and then you have your Pac-Man car made or page. And then you have your uh, Pac-Man family uh, page and your Pac-Man Plus page, and then this is your uh, simple menu page. We'll go into those games in a minute, but I do want to show you a few of the uh, Pac-Man games uh, or Pac-Man mazes rather that are on here. Uh, you know, Midway Pac-Man is your standard uh, Midway Pac-Man maze. 
but there, you, you have all these variations. Uh, like let's say you want to do uh, Pac-Man Sill. So you just have all, all these different kinds of mazes available to you with all these different uh, shortcuts and tunnels. So that's a really neat, it's just a really neat kit uh, to have all these mazes. Uh, what's another one I can show you? Oh, my personal uh, favorite car. I don't think I've ever tried this maze yet. The Z28. Now the car mazes are a little weird, but basically I'm just what I wanted to demonstrate with this kit is that you know you really can't get bored playing the same maze. You have all these options available. And some of the mazes, you know, you really have to, you know, use your ingenuity on how to get through them. Okay, so, uh, what else can I show you here? Let's try a family maze. Uh, let's try a Pac-Man and a Miss Pac-Man maze. Now, no, it does not play Miss Pac-Man. This is Pac-Man. But the maze is shaped um, like the uh, first Miss Pac-Man maze. Uh, the only difference that I notice is that the power pellets are located a little bit differently, which is a little odd. Um, but if you're still looking, you know, just, just for something unique, just a neat kit to have. Um, so I didn't really get any requests to show any specific mazes, so I won't go into all of them. Okay, so let's do other games. I think we've covered the mazes um, as best we can. Okay, so now on your simple menu, like I said, no matter what speed you have uh, your pack set at for each page of Pac-Man mazes, um, you still have this page with slow, fast, slow, fast for Pac-Man, Pac-Man Plus, Ms. Pac-Man, and Ms. Pac-Man Plus. So overall, it's it's still a pretty convenient kit. You don't normally have to go into your menus to change speeds unless you really want to change the speeds in all the mazes if you get tired of it. Um, but still, that's not a big deal. You just go into your service menu, you, change, you make your changes, and that's it. Um, which would be Super Pac-Man. Uh, now, you got to keep in mind that this, you know, is meant to run on... Pac-Man hardware. So, you know, you know, whoever developed this game, you know, they kind of had to, you know, just do it this way. And, and, you know, it doesn't really play as good as the as a standard Super Pac-Man board, obviously. It looks totally different. The sounds are different. Also, this one does not have free play. So we have to add a quarter. You can see the maze is a lot smaller. The characters are a lot smaller. Some of the sounds are different. But basically it's it's the same principle as Super Pac-Man. You're just trying to get keys. And see I ate that uh, super pellet so now I can move fast. I can move through the ghost. I guess for the sake of a good video review, we should complete at least one maze here. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. Get a few ghosts along the way. See, now when I'm Super Pac-Man 2, I can eat through the walls that I haven't uh, unlocked yet with the key. And it looks like Oh no, they, they did change the fruit, okay. I actually haven't played too much of this. Let me see if the bonus if the uh, bonus stage is intact. I'll go ahead and just real quickly finish this game. Okay, so 
I'm no longer a super pac man, and I ate all of my power pellets, so let's get through this. It does keep the, uh, the standard Pac-Man intermission scene intact, although the characters look funny. No, no bonus stage. But other than that, it's pretty much the same gameplay as Super Pac-Man, but obviously um, with the limitations of the Pac-Man board, uh, there's only so much you can do. So here's the next game, Rockola Eyes. This is an actual game that, as far as to the best of my knowledge, put out by Rockola. Pretty neat game. Again, no free play. Let's put a quarter in. And I'm this guy here on the bottom. You use your start button to fire. You gotta avoid these other eyes and the um, beam, the, I guess they're beams that they're shooting at you. And meanwhile, you gotta shoot down all these, uh, I don't know what they are. Just shoot down all these things that are on the uh, play field here. Ah, see, he, he got me there. Sounds a little weird, but... Pretty neat game. I'm gonna go ahead and just die off here. And it has, has a high score table. It looks so, like so far it saved all my high scores. I haven't played this one much. Uh, oh, fire button, okay. So we'll go ahead and get out of this. Show you the next unique game in the list. Oops. Where am I looking for? Oh, here we go, okay. Mr. TNT. This is another kind of neat game. This one's going to be a little harder for me to explain. Again, no free play. So basically on this guy here, and I'm, I'm guessing what these are, these are all kind of like fuses. And i got to get all of them, but you can see I can only stay in the lines that I'm in. So it's possible it's, it's kind of like uh, kicks, you know, it's possible to put yourself in a death trap. You also have to watch out for these fuses that are coming after you. myself in a dead end. And if you let one of these sparks hit you, it's pretty much the same thing. So that's that game. Uh, what's next? Piranha? Uh, a lot of you are probably familiar with this one. It's basically just kind of a, a Pac-Man clone. Um, but you can see they did away with the maze. You're actually this piranha here. Um, but it's the same principle. You know, you've got pellets, you got power pellets. 
and the ghosts are actually these, um, I guess they're octopuses, or however you're supposed to say that. Again, no free play on this one. This one, in my opinion, is really annoying. And it's really, I wouldn't say it's hard, but I think it's just kind of monotonous. You know, you, I, I just really have a hard time, me personally, getting into this one. You may like it. It's a little twitchy, too. Let's see if I can get a power pellet. The score, they've also changed the scoring, too. It's like a really weird score table that they put on this one. It's like 300, like 700. And I've just never had the patience to even get through one maze of this game, to, to be honest with you. So. Probably a decent game, just not personally for me. And see, that's another thing too. I always get stuck in that. You have to be like dead center in that tunnel where you get stuck. Just a really weird game. Not, I'm not really into it. Pack Rabbit. This one's kind of neat. It's basically Pac-Man, uh, but they added, uh, they kind of changed the character set on this. It's like a, like a 3D version of Pac-Man, um, almost like it's trying to be Pac-Mania. Um, also, there's certain parts where you have to hop um, to get to the pellets, but it doesn't play. It sounds like Pac-Mania, but it doesn't play like Pac-Mania. Um, because you cannot hop over the ghost. Um, if you try, you'll just end up killing yourself. You also have uh, a couple of these ghosts here that kind of split up, um, but they're, they're the same ghost in the hardware, or at least the hardware thinks it's the same ghost. And they added this, I guess it's supposed to be like a gumball or a boulder or something. I don't know. Um, we'll play a quick game of this, just kind of show you. <coughs> I also added a uh, if you also added a cheat to this. If you press the two-player button, it slows you down. I have it set for fast speed. If I had it set for slow speed, it would be the exact opposite. I want to see if I can eat. Uh... Yeah, see, I ate the one ghost, but it counted it as the two. Oh, I pressed the wrong button. I was going to try to demonstrate. Um, see, you got these power pellets here that are up, so you have to jump to eat those. But you can't jump over the ghosts. See, watch, I'll try. Oh, maybe I did. Oh, I guess you can't hop over the ghosts. Never mind. Maybe it's this boulder that you can't. Yeah. You can't jump over the, the, the uh, gumball or the boulder or whatever it is. It, you, so you can't jump over the ghosts. So it's a pretty neat game. I just haven't had the uh, patience yet to go completely through it. Um, I'm sure I'll, I'll uh, play it more in depth um, later on as I get bored with the other games. Okay, Caterpillar. I kind of don't remember this one. Oh, it's another uh, Pac-Man clone. And again, with a really weird scoring table, you can actually see my high score. See how it ends with a five? It's really weird. Watch how watch, watch this scoring table. 225, 450, 900, and 1800. They basically just added like uh, 25 points to it. It's really weird. <coughs> It's another game that doesn't have uh, free play support, or it probably does, kind of like Pack Rabbit, which I mentioned in the other, uh, in the first video. But this one actually uses a maze. 
But again, it's just kind of twitchy and kind of a weird one. I will say it's better than Piranha. But since your character's smaller, it's, it's just easier to get stuck, if that makes sense. Well, that's enough of that. It has the same intermission scenes, but with those characters. Now, the two unique games that really make this kit worth it, in my opinion. Here's the first one, Pengo. Uh, Pengo was actually uh, put out by Sega uh, in 1982. Um, and it did not use the, originally use the Pac-Man hardware that I'm aware of. Um, just This is actually, somebody wrote this uh, um, to be able to use it on the Pac-Man hardware. Um, and you can see it'll be missing the uh, uh, kind of the uh, intermission scene, I guess you call it, where uh, where Pengo and all his friends are like on, on a lake, I think it is. Um, you know, obviously the hardware limitations don't allow for that. Um, some of the sounds are different, but other than that, I don't really notice a difference. Um, it's another one that uh, doesn't have free play. I don't have a Pengo to compare uh, to, but if you go on YouTube and, and just look up videos of, of the Pengo arcade game, I think you can see that graphically it's exactly the same. I think there's like a few color differences, um, but that's about it. Other than that, the main difference is uh, the sound. But it's not bad. It's actually a really neat game. Out of the unique games that are on here, this is probably the one that I play the most. And if you haven't played Pengo before, obviously you can kind of see what I'm doing here. These are what they call snow bees, and your object is to get them before they get you. Now if they're along this wall, I can shake the wall and, and uh, stun them. And like Pac-Man, you have intermission scenes. Pretty cool. And this has a top five high score table, I believe. With initials. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just kill myself off here. Although I don't think I have enough points to even reach the high score table. But it might, uh, at least I can maybe show you. do some videography there but uh, see there's basically you got Pengo the snow bee your ice blocks oh I forgot to demonstrate the diamond block um, if you, there's three in each stage and if you manage to um, get them together in a row uh, you get a bonus it's usually I think 10,000 points there's the high score table um, all my high scores are still there nice uh, if you manage to get three of the diamond blocks in a row together, uh, you get a bonus. I think it's like 10,000 points. And it stuns all of the snow bees on the board. Um, and the first couple of stages, it's not too difficult to get these together. But then as it goes along, it's, it becomes very difficult to get three diamond blocks together. Um, I'm not sure if the bonus goes up accordingly or not because I've never been able to manage it. Um, as you can see, my high score is not that glamorous anyway. Um, but this is a really neat game on the kit. It's probably the best unique game, in my opinion, on the kit.
And last and not least, we've got Space Armada, which is Space Invaders. Or, I'm sorry, Alien Armada, which is Space Invaders. I do um, now have a Space Invaders game, and I'll cut away um, in a little bit here to uh, some gameplay footage of that video so um, you can compare the differences. Back to Alien Armada. I'm not sure why my camera just cut off there. Um, but the big difference that bothers me with this game in particular um, is that you do not get an extra life. You, um, now, on a normal Space Invaders game, you get an extra life at either 1,000 or 1,500 points, whatever you, know, you have the uh, extra life set to. This game does not have that. So by you know, default Space Invaders, as long as you get to 1,000 points, you actually have four lives. Uh, but in Alien Armada, you only get three lives. The other difference is that um, when you, the enemies are smaller. Uh, the, on the uh, original Space Invaders game, they're, they're a lot, um, I don't know if they're necessarily larger, but they're spaced closer together. Um, so they're easier to hit in the original Space Invaders than they are in this game. One more difference I want to point out. And by the way, this one also does not have free play. Obviously, the sounds are different as well. Um, but watch this. When I die, let's say I die um, in the middle of a, you know, of a laser beam here. Like, let's see if I can try to demonstrate it. Also, the um, the spaceship on the top there, it's a lot harder to hit. It moves a lot faster than the original Space Invaders. Okay, I'm trying to demonstrate. But basically, see, when I watch, my laser is still there, and now it went there. It's kind of weird. Um, and I understand that that's because of the, you know, it's... It's, it's a hack on Pac-Man hardware. It's not going to run like the original Space Invaders. If you don't, if you don't have the original Space Invaders, or basically if you're not like a total Space Invaders nut, you probably will not notice the differences. If you do, they won't bother you. Um, but just for demonstration purposes, let's uh, cut away to um, my Space Invaders arcade game. And you can kind of see what the differences are. Okay, that's basically everything I'm going to show you. So uh, that's a wrap. The uh, Mike Doyle 96 and one multi-pack kit. We've gone over uh, all the setups and all of the unique games and a few of the mazes. Uh, again, uh, really neat kit to have and uh, 95 shipped to your door anywhere in the United States is a really good price for this kit. Um, really, you know, just just Pengo, you know, and uh, Alien Armada, Pack Rabbit, um, or not maybe not so much Pack Rabbit, but Eyes. 
those are four unique games there, and, you know, that those alone make this kit worth it. And then you add all of these mazes, um, you know, you've got the, the Miss Pack attack on here, uh, just, just everything that this kit uh, has to offer. You'll never, ever get bored um, with your Pac-Man game if you have this kit installed. So highly recommended. Thumbs up. A thanks to Mike Doyle. Um, and we'll see you guys next time. Happy gaming.